some of y'all must understand mm, is that I yield to the spirit of the living God. Even though I walked up in the pulpit with an order of service, even though I have an agenda, but my agenda always submits to the spirit's agenda. And I know that worship can do more for a person than anything that I can say. So some of y'all is uncomfortable. Oh my God, we're worshiping God, but then some of us, my God, our life depends on worship. And sometimes that's all we want to do is worship. So if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Oh my God, but somebody in here understand that God has been good, real good, real good, and somebody's thankful for that. I don't want to talk to the church. I don't want to talk to the I want to talk to the people, my God, that been through some things. I want to talk to the people that's grateful that God stopped you out of hell. Oh my God, He saved us. Yeah, yeah, I want to talk yeah. to those people. Oh my God, I want to talk to the people that's grateful that understand how good God did to you. Somebody give God some glory. Oh my God. Yeah, my God. Let me behave myself. Let me behave myself. Let me behave myself. Look at you, look at you, look at you. My God, thank you, Lord. Oh, I got to be mindful. My spiritual daughter told me to be careful. My God, I'm going to be mindful. Oh, my God. But sometimes we act like we just ain't, God ain't done nothing for us. Sometimes we just think we already heard job well done. You got a 401k, you got a job to go to, you got a house to live in, and you act like you don't got a reason, my God. But I want to talk to some thankful people that's grateful. That's holy for God. That's grateful for God. That God be good to you. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You may be seated. Pastor Manny, come. Come. Let's move the service. We move the service. My God. Come on up, Pastor Manny. Come on up. Come on up. I'm sorry, but I really ain't sorry. <laughs> True be true for you. Let, let, let me move on. Let me move on. Uh, but see, I'm a pastor that cares about the people. And so therefore, when I see the Spirit of God dealing with the people, I've trained my ministers, pastor, and the pastors that's on staff with me, to move out the way and let the spirit. See, a lot of people step in a pool pit with a fleshly agenda. See, I'm trying to say, and an order of service, what you need, my God, to govern the, the, the service. But then you got to learn how to submit and surrender to the spirit of the living God. And when you see people having a time like that in God, uh, my God, whether it's a happiness, but some of it, people are praising because they're going through hell and they need to get free. I can't get nobody to say that right to me. And so they will. They, Hey, 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 hey. And so I just have learned how to get out God's way in. Many times inside of going off for Christ Church that uh, I stepped in the pulpit ready to do what I felt like I needed to do. And the Spirit of God showed me that you don't run nothing. And so sometimes we have just worshiped all service. Two hours. Worshiping. Because that's what he said. Pharaoh, let my people go that they may worship me. Not preach, not shout and speak in tongues, but they may worship me. Worship is a weapon that you can use to torment the devil. And when you've been grateful, when you know what God has done for you, you ain't got no problem with giving God some glory. Hey! hey! Oh, I love when it counters out. As I shift, as I shift, as I shift, as I shift. See, God knew what he was doing because... He never gave me a voice to sing. See, 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 see. If God knew, Eddie, with all this passion, and because I'm so in love with God, where well, I'm strange to a lot of people, because a lot of people don't love God like that. My God, and love ain't got to do with just expression. But God knew he protected the people. Because he said, if I give that man a voice with that passion, he ain't going to never get nothing accomplished. Because all he's going to do is worship. Because when you've been free, when you've been bound up so long, 
And when God has really done it and really delivered you, you can't contain yourself. It's like fire shed up inside of you. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Oh, my God. I'm just trying to settle myself down. Hey, my God, my God. But I'm grateful, my God, for this one here. I'm just going to allow him to take opportunity to speak whatever's on his heart, and then we're going to move forward. just want to acknowledge a few people, and then we're going to move forward, and I'm going to try to get and be dignified. <laughs> I'm on somebody. A little excited. But I'm grateful as I stood in a pool pit and looked down before I called you up. Anita Curl Peoples popped up in my spirit. Irene Starks popped up in my spirit. Callie West popped up in my spirit. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Manny is one of the coverings of going off for Christ Church. Senior pastor out of the Divine Wisdom Worship Center in Oklahoma City. Let's give God a hand for Pastor Manny and Pastor Felicia, his beautiful wife, my God. Mm. Y'all have heard me say this, my God, many a times, and I'm going to move that my church know that if you had not been around in the bush, that I don't know if any of this would exist. Many times as a young warrior for Christ, passion and flesh almost caused me to get ahead of God. Almost caused me to disconnect from my spiritual father, Bishop, and do something that a lot of young pastors, our young preachers, our young ministers don't have. They run out and do something ahead of time. But I had good people like you. They said, no, 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 go back and submit. Do what your spiritual father said. It ain't time yet. And though I have a lot of passion, though I'm cut from that cloth, I know how to surrender and submit. And because I did that, God has birthed it in order. Every step along the way. I can stand in the pool pit as a young pastor and say that everything that God has allowed me and my wife to do, it has been done in order. Nothing has been done out of order. Even from 3434 to 205 South Sheridan, God has blessed through Pastor Jeff and Pastor Lori. And so order in the pool pit matters. I'm so thankful for you and the, and the wife and the Divine Wisdom Worship Center. I'm going to allow you to share what you want to share, and I'm going to move forward, Pastor. One more time, let's give Pastor Manny a hand. Sister Manning, come on. Come stand with me. Praise the Lord. Going hard for Christ Church. Amen. Which we are members of. Amen. Amen. When God blessed you, he blessed us. Amen. Amen. Real quick, it's dangerous to give a preacher a mic on Sunday morning, so I'm going to be very short. But I do, God put something in my spirit. I woke up early this morning with a spirit of praise before daybreak. And the Lord showed me two things of what's going on. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, verse 1, we know that as the Beatitudes. But what was really happening, Jesus was getting ready to take his disciples to another level. And, and just to validate that, if you read the text just before he started the Beatitude, the Bible says when he saw the multitudes, he went up, he climbed up on a mountain, and the Bible says when he was set, his disciples came to him. Mm. So the Lord would have me to say this morning, going hard for Christ, the faith you had over there may not be enough for over here. This is a season not for servants, but climbers. Oh my God, my God. Anybody can serve, but everybody can't climb. The Bible said it was a multitude, but only the disciples went unto him. He didn't call them. When he got set, they came. 
The multitude could have came, but Jesus knew they wouldn't come. So he took them to another level. Why? To increase their faith with the Beatitudes. So I would say to you as I close, it's going to take another level of faith. Don't allow the celebration to be an ambush to be captive. Let's celebrate and we ought to celebrate but keep in mind somebody is angry and everybody is not happy that you are being blessed. For one, we know the Bible identifies him as our adversary, Satan. So I say to you, let's celebrate, let's party. I love a good party. I just don't get drunk no more. Yeah. But when we get through celebrating, let's prepare to climb. Because, because of the multitudes that Jesus see that we may not be able to see right now. With that said, there was one other thing before I even got here, Pastor. And I, three weeks ago, I came into this sanctuary and, and the, anointing was so, the, the anointing was so strong in this sanctuary. Pastor was trying to show me the church. And when we got to this part, he said, come on, Pastor. I said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Let me graze in this right here just for a little while because the anointing in this sanctuary is strong. But God said this morning to me that the one that he just bought in is stronger. The anointing that took this church 65 years, he has put a double anointing on the one that he just bought in. And as I prepare to take my seat, as I prepare to take my seat, Pastor, you better prepare to build your new sanctuary. This won't be big enough. I love this. This is beautiful. But this won't be big enough. And God showed me that you have land already prepared for your new sanctuary. One is a parking lot, but one's for a sanctuary. There are some lots over here. You already own one. Go get the other two because you're going to need it. Going hard for Christ Church. We love you. I'm sorry so much. Uh, Brother Eddie, good to see you and your family. God bless you. I, I apologize. I should have recognized you. Pastor Peoples, you know I love you. We appreciate you. We so happy that we can't stop crying and we can't stop weeping long enough to say much because we are so happy for you and going hard for Christ Church. And I mean that for Sister Michelle in her absence as yes, well. Sir. We love yes. the First Lady. Yes, Amen. Yes. Amen. So, Pastor, come on. Come on, get this mic. Come on, get this mic. She, she, she said I was too long. Come on. Mm. I thank God for the men of God. It's always good to have seasoned people that love you for who you are and not for what you do. God loved me enough to put quality, quality people in my life as I walked into my calling. He had the right people that I would surrender and submit to to keep me from making mistakes that so many young warriors for Christ make without having that proper oversight and covering in their life. I'm not a renegade pastor. I have people that I answer to. My spiritual father was going to be here, my God, but they switched up on him, so he's out of town in, I think it's Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Lafayette, Lafayette, down there with Pastor Lazar, them. my God, they switched it. He was supposed to preach last Sunday, but they switched it. He had to go today, so he sends his love to the going over Christ family, and he said he uh, he's very excited, which as he is, my God, so I thank God for Bishop Gary McIntosh and Pastor Debbie McIntosh, amen. <laughs> And I'm not going to call this next family up because I know they don't like to be in front of people. But many of y'all 
no, uh, just stand, Eddie, just stand. You don't have to, I'm not going to have you talk, just stand. Kendall, can you stand too, Kendall? Amen. I met Eddie and Kendall back in 1998. You may be seated now, Eddie and Kendall. When I first transitioned out of prison after the second time, and God led me to a church called Beautiful Gate where I set up on the Bishop Elijah Hill and Pastor Wesley Gamble at the time and so forth was working for a company called Bios out of Sepulpa, Oklahoma. And I went down to Bios and, and, and filled that application and got blessed with the first job I ever had in my life. I was 30 years old. And God blessed me to be able to work with people that has developmental challenges. But from there, a series of events took place. As I said about Pastor Manny, that's the spiritual side, but God knew that I loved him. I'm not the most educated, but God knew that I loved him. And he knew that if I didn't get legal employment, that I was going back to selling dope and game banging and doing what God snatched me out of. So God sent me to Sir Papa and this man right here, family and guests, even to my own natural blood family. This man sitting right here, on the front row, took a chance. Him and his wife, as well as his father and mother, my God, took a chance on me. Gave me a job working with people with developmental disabilities, which allowed me to be able to uh, work and provide an honest living for my family, which kept me from going back to Egypt, captivity. And from there, a series of events has taken place that also that same man, uh, my God, blessed me to be able to uh, receive a full pardon from Governor Frank Keaton at the time. Let's give God a hand for that. And so I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for Eddie. Quite often we talk and he don't like for me to bring it up, but sometimes the Spirit of God will hit me and I just, when he's driving to Oklahoma City to take care of business and we just talk from Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and I just remind him and I tell him all the time how grateful and thankful I am for him and his family, my God, for what they've done for me. He's another one, my God, if it had not been in my life. And that was from 1998 to present, we are still have remained in covenant. My God, even though I don't work for his company no more, we, he is still one of my best friends. He went from my boss to being my best, one of my best, best friends. Mm, amen. Amen. So I just want to say thank you, Mr. Miller. He's also one of the board members of Going Off for Christ Church, but him and his beautiful wife, Miss Kendall. I thank God for Mr. Miller. That's Eddie Miller's daddy. That's Ed Sr. He told me something uh, when, he worked, when I worked in the office with him. I asked Mr. Miller one time. I quite often talk to Eddie, his son, about this. I asked Mr. Miller. I said, if you can live life, catch this, y'all, all over again. Because he worked hard. Nobody gave them nothing. Oh, my God. They started from the bottom, for real. Ooh, living in a trailer home and so forth. I could just give you their testimony. I mean, snatched up out of the pits of poverty. Oh, but if you look at them today, you'll never know that today, baby. <laughs> yeah, my God. But I asked Mr. Miller one time, because I tend to pick the brains of people that surround me that, uh, that has influenced me. And I asked his father, Ed Miller. I said, if you could live life all over again, what's one thing that you would do different? And Mr. Miller leaned back in his chair. I called him easy money. He, make, he, get, he worked hard early, but he get easy money now. You ain't got to do nothing but stay at home and walk to the mailbox. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. <laughs> but I asked him, I said, if you could live life all over, what would you do different? He retired from Sheffield Steel out in Sand Spring over 35 plus years. He worked there. He worked hard. He worked hard all of his life to provide for his children. My God, uh, Tasha, his daughter, and Eddie, and, and everybody else that's connected to him. But I, I said, well, if you could live life all over, what's one thing that you would do different? And he leaned back in his chair. He said, he used to call me, never sweat. Never sweat. That's what he used to call me. 
He said, I would have took care of myself when I was younger. He said, I would have made better decisions. Because when you reach that age, when you run hard and party hard, your body start breaking down. When you got to start taking pills to get through the day and pain and knee replacements and all different type of stuff. My God, that's, a, that's an, a, a, an effect because of the way he lived early on when he was young. And so I thought about this, Sister Sharon. I gave my life to Christ when I was 25 years old in a six by nine prison cell. And I'm going on 50 if the Lord delay is coming this September. My God. Amen. And I give God the glory, my God, that uh, I'm taking care of myself. That I'm striving to live a long, prosperous life if the Lord delay is coming. But I want to say thank you, Mr. Miller and Mo. We call her Mo. That's Mama. That's Eddie's mother and father. That's a blessing to have your mother and father. So even though I'm up on the pulpit and you see them behind me, but really there's a whole lot of people up here with me that has impacted and will continue to impact my life as I continue to move forward. And in my last, I got my family sitting here, some of them. My cousin Sean drove all the way in from Texas and you see his, his son Josh and my cousin Elena. Of course, y'all know Mother Dorothy, Con Dorothy. I'm here because of part of her prayers. My God, I seen Monty somewhere. I don't see him. Nowhere. He's somewhere. Oh, there you go, back there. Monty and Tony, stand up right quick. These are my two oldest brothers right here. Y'all yeah, just turn around and let them see y'all. Because, see, we handsome. Come on, turn around let them see y'all. We... Uh, I can't get nobody to say that. But I thank God for my brothers. That's Tony Mims and that's Marty. And of course, y'all know John. And I got a brother, Bucky, who was in his absence. And my sister, Nicole Starks, couldn't make it. And I had another sister, Pookie, that went on to glory. But I thank God for my family. I thank God for my family. Been through a lot together as a family, but, but God. And then I see Kim and... This all y'all just stand up. Just stand up, Kim. Kim, just stand up, my beautiful cousin out of L.A. My God. <laughs> cousin Sean ain't Dorothy. Come on, stand up, cousin. cousin. Y'all stand up. Just let me love on y'all a little bit. Come on, Elena. Come on, Josh. Y'all stand up. God bless y'all. Amen. 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 It's my extension right there. Amen. I give God the glory. Amen. You may be seated. Six years. It's very strategic that God would have us launch our first service at the new campus on a Sunday, the seventh of our sixth year as a church. Go on hall for Christ, stand and give God some glory for your six year anniversary. It's a lot of y'all, my God. <laughs> amen, amen. I personally just want to say happy birthday to each and every one of us as God has blessed all of us he just didn't just bless me and my family he also has blessed you because of God and your faithfulness my God and God loved us enough to bless us with a beautiful facility of our home we went from renting to owning my God in six years God has blessed us with 51,000 plus square feet I can't get nobody to say nothing right there Woo, a six year old church somebody give God some glory Whew. Amen. Amen. And I'm a firm believer that God would have never gave it to us if he didn't have plans for it. But you said something as I move quickly, Pastor. Everybody ain't happy. But I'm going to behave myself. Because as T.D. Jake said, you need a little haters because all they do is give you free advertisement. So going off for Christ, I want to say on behalf of myself as well as my wife that we love you. We appreciate you. God didn't do this for launch peoples and the shell peoples. God did this for going off for Christ and everybody that's coming to going off for Christ Church. This is what God has blessed you with, my God. So you ought to steal one more time. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. 
going to take this opportunity to, to speak a little word into the atmosphere. I thank God for Christian and Amber and the praise and worship team. Brother Christian is getting ready to, Amber's already graduated from ORU and he's getting ready to graduate in. Amen, amen. We're getting ready to uh, go on for Christ. Y'all like Christian and Amber? Yeah! All these ORU students, it's, if y'all from ORU, stand up, all ORU students. Man, look at all that, y'all. Look at all them kids. Ah, okay. I know some of them babies will be going back home during the summer break, but when they come back to Tulsa, they got a place where they can come serve their gifts and be a blessing to the kingdom. I thank God for you, Pastor James. Pastor James, please stand. Let me honor you, son. Amen. Pastor James is one of the founders of Going Off of Christ Church. We come up out of Greenwood Christian Center, now known as Transformation, but we come up out of Greenwood together and, and we transition and, and he helped birth Going Off of Christ Church. All them beautiful granite and all the stuff you see in the bookstore and all in the bathrooms. If you hadn't, Pastor James donated all that granite. He owns his own granite to the church. Amen. Amen. So I love you, son. Thank God for you. And fought a lot of wars and battles together. God has truly delivered you, son. Thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for your heart. And to all of the leaders and all of the body of the family, again, thank you for believing in the God that I serve. We have fought a lot of battles. We've seen them come and we've seen them go. We've been celebrated and we've been misunderstood all in the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's a remnant of Joshua's that has remained. One thing that I can truly say that God has always kept a remnant of believers together to move forward. Not just to occupy but to possess our inheritance, my God. And so I give God the glory. Pastor Dean, you might want to get upstairs. I'm echoing. My God. And so I want to say thank you to all those that have stayed. As we develop together as a community of believers, one thing that God has keep bringing up in my spirit, now that we are here to possess, is that we must stay unified. Yeah, that's right. We cannot let contamination creep in in any capacity. We got to be guarding against the python. When a python bites you, it paralyzes you. Then it starts wrapping itself around you to suffocate you. We got to guard against that because God has done and is doing something great. And so I'm reminded of the great Tamara Bennett out of Sacramento, California, who preached many, many years ago at Greenwood Christian Center. When she prophesied and gave a word to the church, it never left me. That's why it's so good to be in the house of the Lord, people. Quit letting society tell you that you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. You can't show me that nowhere in the Bible where you don't have to go to church. Now, I'm not saying church save you. That's not what I'm saying. But according to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, 25, the Bible tells you and I not to forsake the assembly. This is the assembly of God. As in a manner of some doing. You show me a person that will never want a fellowship, never want to be around other believers, I'll show you somebody that got a whole lot of secret sin going on in their life. Because a person, my God, uh, that want to be in the light, they're not concerned about what's going to be exposed. But a person that don't want to be found out, they're going to stay in the dark. They're going to do everything they can to stay away from people that might discern or discover who they really are. But Tamra Bennett, my God, said that. You're going to have to watch. 
Because the enemy will come in to a body of believers and try to tear down or destroy from within. We tend to think that the enemy always want to attack from without. He does. But he'll come in and get right amongst you. He'll come in and sit down and be on the porters and greeters and be on the media and praise and worship and, you know, and pastor, I love you. Man, can I pack your bags? And first lady, can I wash your car? And they do all that. Uh, People come for many reasons. But that's okay. I just want to put that in the atmosphere. As I receive what you said, Pastor Manny, that we have to protect family and those that will possibly become a part of this family. I'm showing you my heart. I'm showing you what I'm about now. I'm not a polished pastor. I'm not a seminary pastor. I am who I am. And I'm saved, sanctified, and live a life for Christ outside of the four walls. I can't get nobody to say nothing, but it is what it is. But we have to guard what God is doing and will continue to do in the body of going hard for Christ church. My mantle and your mantle would have to increase in order to handle everything that's coming this way. The enemy and the battles we fought at 3434, we're going to have to seek God for strategic methods and ways to fight over her. We can't fight the same way that we fought at 3434. There's a whole lot going on around her, and God has moved this Joshua nation into this piece of real estate, my God, in this environment because we have what the surrounding community need, my God. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I'm leading up to where I'm going. Strategically, God has strategically placed us here to do a work. He didn't bring us here to sit in the pews. Pastor, we going to get church? No, we're going to get pews. We're going to sit right there until we go out and change this community. Until these. Because if we take it because God's business, we won't be worrying about them pews no way. Because we're going to be out here terrorizing the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm grateful. grateful thank you again for your continual support if you have your Bibles please stand it's our custom here going off for Christ Church if you can and turn to the book of Judges I believe God got something you want to say Judges chapter 6. Lord, increase my anointing. Set down on me, God. Save somebody's soul, Lord. Reclaim every backslider under the sound of my voice, Father God. Unlock, 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 Father God, every prison door in the mind, in the emotions. Heal everybody, Father God, I decree and declare. Somebody needs to come to the saving knowledge. Who, my God, of our Lord and our Savior. My God. Judges, chapter 6, story to verse number 11. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree of Ophrah which belonged to Joash, the clan of Ebenezer. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom. <laughs> Started from the bottom, now we heard. Yes, sir. Threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, your, your version may say, Mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you. Even though you're hiding out, the Lord is still with you. Even though you're letting fear stop you from obeying God, the Lord is still with you. God told you to build it, and you let fear tell you not to build it, but the Lord is still with you. Verse 13 says, Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And were are all the miracles our ancestors told us about. Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites? 
verse 14 says, Then the Lord turned to him. After he said all that, the Lord turned to him and said, Go, <laughs> just like God, with the strength you have, and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you, not your neighbor, you. God has sent you going off of Christ to affect this neighborhood, this community. My God. But the Lord, but Lord, but Lord, but Lord, Gideon said, uh, how can I mm, rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in the entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Gideon replied, if you are truly going to help me, show me. <laughs> yeah, we still need a sign. Quit acting all holy and vile. Show me a sign to prove that it's really you, Lord, speaking to me. Lord, thank you now for the few minutes. Go on my tongue. Let your personality come forth. I decrease. Guard me. Let me only say what you need to say. Nothing more than nothing less. Lord, I'm not here to put on a show. I'm here to obey you. And I surrender and submit to your spirit. Increase so that I can decrease. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Interesting study as I begin to seek the Lord. Uh, two weeks, my God, concerning. I knew we had the six-year anniversary. But also, too, I knew that we had to uh, launch this service. And I was really seeking God. I could truly say to my pastors and ministers, uh, your pastor's mind was very cloudy, very cloudy. A lot of work is taking place, a lot of work, a lot of manual work, my God. It was over 67 years of stuff that was left in this building, all over this church, my God, this campus there. We needed to get in order because y'all know pastors like order. I like stuff to be right. I can't have stuff out of order. And so we spent the whole month, the Going Hard for Christ Church family, uh, cleaning and, and, and throwing away stuff and getting stuff ready. And, my God, we had f the first Saturday, we had four dump trucks, four dump trucks full of stuff and one big, big waste basket full of stuff. And then we came back the following Saturday, and we had more stuff. And then we, I thank God for, I see Brother Kelly and him down there, the band of brothers that help us clean up our gym. We got a full gym back there. Let's give God a hand for that. My God. Mm. I thank God for the band of brothers, my God. Matter of fact, to all of my sons and sons, I'm going to be speaking this Thursday here at the campus in the fellowship hall at the band of brothers meetings. About 125 of them. They meet every 30 Thursday on this campus. So I'm going to be Kelly, my God. Brother Kelly, stand up for me, right, Brother Kelly? Uh, that's one of the founders of the band of brothers right there. Amen. 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 I'm going to be speaking there. He asked me to speak, so I'm going to be speaking this Thursday. So I'm asking all my sons to please come out as we co-labor and join with the band of brothers this Thursday as I prepare, my God, to bless them. But also they have stepped in and helped us get the campus together. So where I'm going with this is a lot of work, a lot of work, a lot of tedious work, man. Tired, long hours, long hours, long hours. My God, physical tired, mentally tired, my God. And in the midst of all that, still trying to pastor. Still having meetings, still dealing with people, still dealing with situations. A pastor's life ain't nothing but a bunch of crisis. And most of it come from people. Bishop said, are you sure? Oh, my God, you got such a good life. Are you sure you want to be a pastor? He tried to talk me out of it. He told y'all that. He tried to talk me out of being a pastor, but I had to go for it. I don't regret it. Have it been painful? Yes. It's, been put, it's put a lot of pressure personally. Ah, marriage-wise, kids-wise, everything. Boy, the office of a leader is major. And if we, if we go like this man just said, we're going to need another sanctuary. Oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> Moses said, dirty dads, if I got to go through all the God, what did I do, Moses said, to deserve? If I got to go through this, you might well kill me. Moses didn't want to, you talking about 600, you talking about a million people. Moses was like, God, I don't want to do this. I haven't arrived there yet. I thought about it, but I'm still in the race. But I thank God for all that he has done. And so where I was going with this, my, my mind been cloudy. A lot going on, trying to get pulse, trying to see, God, what, a, what word you want to give to the people. And so I come up, my God, to Gideon. Gideon reminds me of me right now. Y'all know pastors transparent. I don't try to be something or somebody that I'm not. But Gideon was dealing with a lot of fear. Because the Midianites, my God, was tormenting his people. And the word of God says the reason why he was hiding 
is the Israelites, chapter 6, verse 1, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over. Quit thinking the devil is doing everything. See, that's what the devil wants you to think. See what I'm trying to say? Uh, but the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years because they did evil. I know we're living in grace. I know a lot of people are preaching this grace heavy message, but can I say this to you why I got an opportunity? Because I only get one shot with some of y'all. My God, let me help you with this right here. You and I, I and you still have to deal with consequences behind our choices. Even though God going to forgive you and I, thank God for forgiveness, but still, you and I got to pay the piper, baby, my God, behind our choices and our decisions. So though we up under grace and God is not killing us like he was in the Old Testament, we still have to pay the piper, my God, behind our choices and our decisions. Quit thinking that you and I get to do what we want to do because we up under grace and there is going to be no consequences. That's not Bible. The Bible says that God handed them over because they did evil in the Lord's sight. And so, my God, the Midianites was terrorizing the people of God. And so, therefore, they went to hiding in mountains and caves and so forth. And the great man of God was hiding out of fur. As I stand up here, there's a whole lot of, I'm going to be keeping on fur right now. But as my wife said, you got to do it afraid. Come on, somebody. And so, therefore, a lot of us, my God, fear has paralyzed us. Let me help you. Fear has paralyzed us and has kept us from obeying God. We keep telling ourselves, I'm not qualified. They're going to laugh at me. You sure, God, you want me to do that? Don't let fear paralyze you. There's such thing as healthy fear and there's such thing as paralyzing fear. Ask yourself, as you sit under the sound of my voice, which one is stopping you and which one is moving you? Is fear that's unhealthy keeping you from doing what God has asked you to do? My God, because you can why? We quote Philippians, my God, for, what is it? Uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If that's the case and you really believe that, then why are you not doing what God told you to do? See, you got to guard against fur. So the man of God was in fur. He was in fur because of the enemy, because the people that he was connected to was in sin. In some form of way, they abandoned God. They disobeyed God. And so now they found themselves being tormented because God handed them over. To the Midianites. So your destiny, church, is the answer to the question, what has God called me to do? Many of us is asking right now, God, what am I called to do? Destiny is connected to that answer. Your identity is the answer to this question. Who has God called me to be? Who are you? Who are you today? Do you ever stop and say that and say, God... Why did I make it out? What's my purpose? What's my destiny? And as you travel on through life, as you begin to say, God, show me, reveal to me who I am. Reveal to me my purpose. Reveal to me my destiny. God will begin to align you and move you toward your purpose, toward your destiny. Here is the thing that hurts a lot of us as Christians. Because when we don't understand stuff, we tend to make fleshly decisions. And we, as Minister Janice, always say we abort the process. If the pastor don't acknowledge me, if she don't speak to me, I'm leaving. And I'm going to the next church, and if it don't work there, I'm leaving. And so we constantly wondering. We, 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 we think we're not wondering 40 years in the wilderness, but we're wondering around our purpose. Oh, I'm landing and I'm taking my time for a reason. In Judges 6, Israel is living under oppression from the enemy in the wine press. I mean, uh, uh, from the enemy, the Mennonites. A young man called Gideon is hiding in the enemy's wine press, threshing wheat. God sends an angelic angel, a messenger, to Gideon to proclaim his God-given identity. That's just like God. Here this man is hiding in fur, and God sends an angel to speak life with us death at. Oh, my God. The word of God says in Judges 6, 12 through 14, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, mighty hero, a mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. Even though you're in fear, even though you're in a cave, even when you're you battling in your health, even though you're battling in your mind, you're still a mighty man. You're still a mighty man. You're still a mighty woman. 
You're still fearfully and wonderfully made. God created you in his image. I'm trying to speak to your identity. I'm trying to speak to who he is. Oh, my God, thank you. Oh, God, I thank you. Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? When the angel calls Gideon a mighty hero, he is calling him by his God-given identity. In the Bible, a given name is often equal, my God, with a God-ordained identity. God-ordained destiny. That's why in the scripture days, they was very prayerful and careful about what they named and who they named their children. Because names associated your purpose and your destiny in life. Don't just call your child a name. Johnny go lucky. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. But see, Gideon name means cut her down or destroyer. Who was a warrior hiding out from the enemy in fear, but he's a warrior. But he's in fear. He's a warrior. He's hiding because he didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Many of you are still hiding out in fear. Yeah. That's good. Oh, you got good. <laughs> Let me catch myself. We dressed up real good. We got on the right suits. Make sure our nails and stuff is done. Make sure we got six inches on the hair. I can't get nobody to say nothing. <laughs> Make sure we got a Stacey Adams on. And we hiding because we just real like that are going off for Christ Church. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm trying to help you. But we hiding behind a false identity. And many of us is wasting time in life and well as in God's kingdom because we don't know who we are. Gideon was hiding out, and Gideon's name means cut her down and destroy her. Gideon was a warrior, but he didn't know it. As I taught my church last Sunday, sometimes you have, you have to have a head-on collision with God to discover who you are. I had to have one in a six-by-nine prison cell, and I thank God that I did. But you got to ask yourself, who are you? God did not create you, nor did God die, just so you can get a job, get some 401K, take a couple of vacations, my, come on, do a little shopping, and then hopefully one day die and stand before God. That's not why God created you. I need every last one of you to truly understand that God created you with a specific purpose and plan. God created your purpose first. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. God created your purpose. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. God created your purpose. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. God created your purpose first. Then he created you for your purpose. And so, what am I saying? So, all the mistakes and failures that you and I have made, God knew you was going to make them. So, why are you beating yourself up? Why are you in condemnation? Why are you letting people tell you what you can't be? Why are you letting people judge you about what you did in the past? God created your purpose and he created you for your purpose. Can't nobody, the late Dr. Miles Rose said, you got to find your spot. Can't nobody beat you when you get to your spot. When you find your spot, you ain't got to compete with nobody. Because what God created for you is for you. Can't nobody do it. I can't do what Eddie Miller do, and Eddie Miller might can't do what I do. He might can get up and preach, but Eddie Miller ain't finna go out on the streets and preach the gospel to them prostitutes and all that because he didn't come from that. Amen. Stay with me. He didn't come from that. And so he can give them a word, but I can identify with them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, see, I'm way... Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you can give somebody a word, but can you identify with their struggle? You could tell them a whole lot of Bible, my God, but can you step in the midst of what they're going through and say, I've been where you've been. And I'm telling you, I'm a witness that you could come out if you decide to come out. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And so, therefore, you got to know who you are. When you know who you are, you don't waste time. Gideon didn't know who he was, but he was a destroyer. And Gideon is destined to be a leader, my God, who, with God's help, will overthrow the powerful enemy. Gideon sees himself, and I'm moving insignificant and powerless write that down he sees himself how do you see yourself this afternoon because how you see yourself is very very critical and important to your next step if you see yourself as insignificant if you see yourself as powerless 
If you see yourself as a nobody, and I know, especially in African American culture, we've been told that you're gonna be sorry like your daddy, you're gonna be sorry like your mama, you ain't gonna never amount to them. See, we've been told that type. So that's real stuff in African American culture, my God. And that has been embedded into our belief system. And now we begin to believe, my God, what people have spoken to our lives, and we don't try to do nothing. And we see ourselves the way other people see us. Instead of seeing you, seeing yourself the way God sees you. God sees you and I as fearfully and wonderfully made. God says in Genesis, he created you and I in this image. My God. Oh, my God. Don't you know that the Bible says that you are our sons uh, and daughters. Come on, somebody. That we are joint heirs, my God, to God. Are you listening to me? My God. God love you and I enough, my God, to come out of heaven, my God, and hang between two thieves so that you and I can have life. God loves you. He don't see your past like everybody else do. He don't see your mistakes. My God, quit telling yourself you insignificant. You matter. There's so many testimonies sitting up off from here. You matter. You matter. Don't you know that you are a miracle because you are in here today? Think about what God has done for you, church. A miracle. But Gideon, my God, remember he's a destroyer. Pastor James, he's a destroyer. He's a cutter down. That means he cut stuff down. My God, when he cut it down, he got a people following him because he's making headway for the people that's... Who, Minister Melvin, my God. He, he, he's going before the people and he's cutting down. He's waging war. He's swinging his sword, my God. And he's making a trail for his young warriors coming behind him. He cut down everything that the devil trying to use to destroy him. He's destroying it. Come on, somebody. He's cutting, my God. He's cutting. He's fighting. He's, war. he's a warrior, but he's in a wine press hiding out in fur. Adam was out there. God knew where Adam was, but Adam didn't know where he was. Ain't it interesting that Adam covered himself with the very thing that he fig leaves. In the garden, the tree, the plant, and the grapes. You have trees, plants, and grapes. Grapes, you get alcohol. Tree deals with money. Plants deal with meth, cocaine, See, this is kingdom. This ain't church over here, baby. My God. In the garden that God put, put placed Adam in, God gave Adam dominion, son, over the plant, the tree, and grapes, the fruit. And so, therefore, in, when you look at uh, the grapes, you get wine, you get alcohol, come on. And then and you, you, the, the trees, you get money, come on. The currency, you money, come on, somebody. And the plant, you get all type of drugs. But God gave Adam, before sin entered the world, dominion over that stuff. And so, therefore, I'm talking about identity. I'm still in my sermon, baby. Oh, my God. And so, therefore, if anybody on the sound of my voice is being dominated by the tree, the plant, and grapes right now, you out of order because God gave you dominion over that. That should be wrong. So, if you... So if you can't put down the cigarettes, you can't put down the wine, the alcohol, the kind of yak, you can't quit. Oh, oh my God. I, you don't know. See, I just come to know who I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. God found me in that prison cell and I found out who I was. And so I got dominion over the very thing that led me to prison. Drugs led me to prison. And when God showed me that you got dominion over that, that used to be on top of me. I'm on top of it now. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. So what's on top of you that you supposed to be on top of? Oh, I'm st- See, when you know who you are, my God, you operate different. Uh, you're not governed. The late Dr. Miles, y'all know I reference him because, my God, he best my life. He said the second greatest miracle that ever happened to him was that he got delivered from the opinions of people. Uh, people will keep you in prison. People will tell you you can't, you're not qualified. People will tell you ain't good enough. Girl, what you got? Four kids. Ain't nobody going to want you. My, you saw, man, you've been in prison. Ain't nobody going to, ain't nobody going to take you seriously. Juju for the start of church. Oh, la, la. See, people, people who don't know who they are will try to tell you who you ain't because they don't know who they are. I'm trying to act dignified up here, Kendall. And so that's why you can't let people, my God, dictate and tell you who you are. Half of the people that have told you who you are and tried to tell you what your purpose is didn't even know who they are and don't know their purpose. And so we got a bunch of people in the Christendom, my God, trying to live up to the identity of somebody else. Because they saw you. This is what they saw. You ain't never took time to find out how God saw you. God, is that me? Is I supposed to be doing that in my... 
So therefore, the man of God was in a pit, cave, my God, wine pressed, my God, infer, my God, running from the enemy, my God. But even in the midst of that, God spoke to his identity. God spoke to Gideon's purpose. I said, okay, God, right there reading that, that's where we at right now. That's the word for the house. And so the title of the sermon, and I'm not going to even try to finish it all, is Strategic Timing. God came to Gideon at a strategic time in fear. See, God called him, my God, at a low point. Ooh, see, everybody want God on a mountain, but God will speak to you in the valley. <laughs> uh, God came and spoke to that man's identity, my God, at a low point. Let me, let, me, let me make it plain, my God. See, Gideon was down here living in fear. He wasn't up there on the spotlight with the microphone. He wasn't sitting beside the pastors. He wasn't riding in the car with the CEO of the company. He was down here in fear. You know what I'm trying to say? I, I, uh, 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 somewhere, you know what I'm saying, out of order, as I would say. You know what I'm saying? Uh, out of position. <laughs> out of his spot. <laughs> out of purpose. <laughs> Not operating in the God's plan that he had for him, my God. And God said, you know what? I'm going to speak to this man's identity. And I'm going to call those things that be not as though they are. And so I'm going to speak to him. He said, uh, get in. He said, an angel. He said, a uh, mighty man of valor. How many know that sometimes all you need is an affirmation? All you need is somebody to believe in you. All you need is somebody to say, you know what? I don't care about your past. I'm going to give you a job anyway because I see your future. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All you need is somebody that can relate to you, my God. My God, when you were struggling with 10 years of alcoholism, my God, because I've been delivered from all that, my God. God delivered me so he could deliver you. And now you set free and delivered, my God. The same God, the same God, same God, same God, same God. He spoke to the men of God. Strategic timing. Let me speak prophetically. Strategic timing. Where's Amber? Strategic timing. Let me go deeper with the strategic. Strategic moments. This is a very strategic moment. Some of you came to celebrate. Some of you came to support. But a lot of you don't understand. Some of you came to belong. You just don't know it yet. So point number one. God initiates our identity and our destiny. I'm going to read this and I'm going to get out your way. God does. I want you to know that in order for you to find out who you are and who you are, familiar, familiar verbiage, but you got to go back to the source. You got to go back to the one that created you. Quit looking to man, no gender, to tell you who you are and tell you what you can I cannot do without going into the story many of you know my story know my past probably better than I did even though I lived it but if I were to listen to the opinions of people Juju started who gonna follow you you preach too hard I heard a lot of that who gonna follow you six years later I didn't get a lot. That's okay. It's okay. Going over class. Give God some glory for your pastor. <laughs> Why did I just do that? Because as I was telling my spiritual daughter, I need encouragement sometime too, Eddie. Amen. Everybody want me to... There is a remnant of people that appreciate the price that has been paid to be at this piece of real estate. So God, my God, initiates, my God, our identity and our destiny. According to Ephesians 2.10, it tells us this. For we are God's masterpiece. I want to speak to your identity. I promise you I'm done. You and I are God's masterpiece. Oh, my God, I was looking at that, man. Think about a masterpiece. Yes, original. Uh, when that's why Christ wanted one of the purposes that Christ when he came down out of heaven he came back to reclaim you and I 
and bring us back to our original purpose, back to our original identity. Oh, because we didn't let the trees and the plants and the grapes, my God, dictate who we are. And God is trying to reclaim you and I back to your identity. When you get back to your original identity, then you start living. You won't just exist. When you are operating who you are created to be, you operate and function different. You see life different. The Bible says to the pure, they see things as pure. To the defiled, they see things as defiled. So, my God, God came to restore you back to your original condition. And so God calls you in the word. That's why I thank God for the word. Oh, my God, the word. God says, I am a masterpiece, Kendall. Thank you for your encouraging words this morning, my God, says Kendall. But I'm a masterpiece. Cousin Sean, I, 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 and this may sound arrogant, but it's not. God said I was a masterpiece. So when you tell somebody, I don't care what you think about me, I'm a masterpiece. See, they say that's pride. They say that's pride, but that's just what the Bible said, that I'm a masterpiece. But see, we won't stand up for who we are because we worry about how people are going to perceive us. Just because I said I'm a masterpiece, you said I was a failure, but God said I was a masterpiece. You arrogant, no? I'm a masterpiece. I'm fearfully wonderfully made. I'm created in God's image. God loves me. I'm God's favorite, as Janice say. I'm just operating who I am. I know who I am, so I'm walking in my identity. Don't hate on me because I know who I am and you don't. That's not my problem. I'm a masterpiece. So are you. God said that you are a masterpiece. That's why death couldn't kill you. That's why drugs couldn't take you out. Come on, somebody. That's why even though he, he was very abusive, God snatched you out. Because he said, you know what? I'm going to use it now for a testimony. You're going to help other abused women. I come, uh, uh, instead of saying, God, why me? Say, God, use me. See, we talking about God, why me? Why me? It's part of your purpose. It's part of your destiny. Some of the things you're going through and been through, my God, I don't understand it all, neither do you. But it's all working together for the good. God allowed you to go through it because he's going to use it as a weapon to torment the devil. You got to go through it. He got to use you. He ain't got nobody else to use. You was created for that. That's your spot. You had to go through some of the stuff you went through because he didn't have nobody else to go through it. So there is a level of suffering and persecution connected to your identity. Because God needs you and I to go through something so we can help the next person. And can I tell you this? If you hear people say this, some of the stuff you're going through ain't about you. God is getting you ready for the people that he's going to send to you. <laughs> God initiated Gideon's identity. God spoke to him. Let God tell you who you are. Quit sitting in places where they're not speaking to your destiny. Quit sitting up under people who's not allowing you to come forth to be used. Oh, my God. Quit sitting up under people and being around people who need you to stay, my God, in poverty with a poverty mentality. Who don't want you to soar. Because when you decide to soar, that means they got to make a decision to soar. How they going to stay? I said, quit sitting around people, my God, my God, that will allow you to stay, my God, in poverty. Poverty. I'm not talking about financial poverty. With a poverty mindset. Mediocrity. When you make a decision that it's time to take flight, that it's time to soar, the people that's in your circle, the people that you communicate with, got to make a decision. Either I'm going to go with them or I'm going to have to get away from them. You ain't got to be mean. All you got to do is just do what God called you to do. And God will start clipping along the way. Everybody can't go. You ain't got to be mean to nobody. My God, just do what God called you to do. And those that's supposed to fall off, leave where they going to fall off because they're not called to go where you're trying to go. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. That's why Pastor Manny said only the 12 went to the mountain. Everybody can't go up with you, baby. Oh, now my God. Some people can go this far. Some people can go this far, my God, but they can't go this far. And then these can go this far, but they can't go this far. You got to have a clamor mentality. You got to have a Joseph, my Joshua mentality. Let me finish this point. So you're a masterpiece. Look at your neighbor, please. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a masterpiece. Come on, look at him and say, I'm a masterpiece. My God. God created you anew in Christ. Oh, my God. He created you anew in Christ. Uh, can I say this right quick? Ah, oh, Lord. Don't you know when you and I come down here and accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, what takes place is on the inside. You become born again internally. Your spirit connects with heaven. But what hurts a lot of people, because I'm going with the scripture, because he said, my God, you are created anew. That's why the Bible says old things are passed away. Behold, new things has come about. But what hurts a lot of Christians is that they will come down here and give their life to Christ, per se. But what hurts us, us, is that instead of us trying to conform to the second Adam, we continue to function and operate with the first Adam. 
the first Adam sinned. So God said, when you become born again, now you created, you and I, masterpiece after the second Adam. So one of the things that I caught early on sitting in that dungeon, my God, I learned that I need to fashion my life after the second Adam and not the first Adam. That's why going home for Christ is a what? Going home for Christ is a what? But see, many people, my God, that's in the body of Christ, I'm not judged, I'm not casting no stones. You and I, I and you got to understand you are a masterpiece and that you created a new, but you and I got to start thinking like the second Adam. That's why it says, let this mind be in you, Paul said, that was also in Christ Jesus. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, you're going to continue, though you have given your life to Christ, your, your life will continue to look like the first Adam and it will never become formed like the second Adam if you don't allow God to transform your mind. And so even though God spoke to Gideon, my God, in the wine press, my God, Gideon had to accept his new identity. Have you accepted yours? Your new identity, I don't care what you've been through, is in the second Adam. Don't make the mistake like thousands and thousands of Christians, my God, that give their life to Christ, but they never conform to the second Adam. When you conform to the second Adam, you, your nature change. You start loving what God loves. Uh, you start forgiving people that need to be forgiven. You start letting go all that residue and all that mess. Oh, my God, you start looking at life completely different, my God. Oh, you can't stay bitter and get better at the same time, baby. One of them got to go, my God. But when you operate, you can always tell if you operate in the first Adam because you won't let it go. You won't stop doing the things that you know that's displeasing. And some people, can I tell you this? I'm still with the sermon. Some people don't read their Bible because they don't want to know the truth. Because they know if they don't know the truth, now they got to make a decision to obey the truth. So they say, I didn't know that, so that's why I've been doing what I've been doing. <laughs> oh, my God, but when you come into the saving knowledge of God, you got to know different. God said, I said before you, life and death, blessings and curses. He said, choose life. You know which way to take. Some things is common sense. And so I need to encourage you. The second Adam is who you and I should be seeking after. And that you got to remember that God initiates and also that you are a masterpiece and that you are and have been made new. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm new. Even though I still got this same scar, I still got all these holes and things I've been through in life, I am made new from the inside. That's why, my God, when grace came out of heaven, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within. God was pointing the church to look inward instead of outward. Can I tell you this as I move? Quit being so focused on what you look like external and make sure that your motives and heart is right internal. Oh, this is real, Pastor. God reminded me, Mother Margaret, to, and I told my church, remember what I created this church for? Build people and change lives. I ain't in it for no other reason. So if you want to do church, I'm sorry. If you want to transform, this is where you need to be at. God stepped into Gideon's normal everyday life. I'm going to finish with this. And speaks to his purpose and his plan for him. God's purpose, my God, for our lives is not our own idea of what we would like it to be. See, this is what hurts and gets us in trouble. Us, not y'all, us. Because I like to identify I and you, you and I. You have a plan. We have dreams. We have things we want to do. We have a vision of what we want life to look like. But one of the most frustrating things that I have found is when we don't take time to seek God's plan for our life. And so you busy over here, we busy over here trying to execute this fleshly plan, trying to make this fleshly plan, plan uh, 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 produce. And God's saying, you just keep kicking against the prick. You just keep bumping your head because nothing that you're trying to do is going to work because that's not what I want you to do. That's your vision. I got a vision for you. I got a plan for you. I got a purpose for you. I created you f your purpose, and then I created you for your purpose. Can I help liberate? Liberate means set some of you free. It's important at this day and time because some of us, a lot of us got less days in front of us than we got behind us. It's so important to repent today and say, God, you know what? I've been trying to execute. I went to school. I got a degree. I'm just trying to do all this stuff. That's fine. But after you say all this, say, God, what is your plan for me? Have you tried to seek God's plan and will for your life? Have you said, God, you know what? I'm tired. I, I got this stuff, but I, I'm still not fulfilled. I got cars. I got house. I got clothes. I, I go on vacations. I do the things I want to do, but I'm still not fulfilled. You know why? Because there's a place and there's a plan 
And there's a purpose that God put in you that you're not going to have real spiritual fulfillment, real natural fulfillment until you do what God called you to do. That's why you can have it all and still be unhappy. So you have a plan and God has a plan. I think it's better to submit to God's plan than our plan. I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. God's destiny for your life will consist, will be consistent with the way he has wired you. It may be helpful for you and I to consider this right here. I'm closing. Consider this right here, y'all. Consider your, write this down, your experiences. What things have you experienced in life? That means things that you have been through. Remember, God initiates this thing, and God has a plan. And so there are certain things that you and I have experienced, and we all, we all say, God, why? Why did I go through that? We have a whole lot of Mephibosheths sitting in here right now. Mephibosheth was dropped physically. A lot of us has been dropped as I told my men two weeks ago in the men's meeting, Pastor Manny, I walked up to the, to the window. I said, many of us is in the window right now looking and still waiting on daddy to come. We standing in the mirror window looking with our backpack right there waiting on daddy to come. And when the Spirit of God spoke that in the men's meeting, some of my sons started crying. One of them is real enough, and I won't call his name and say, Pastor, that's me. I'm still waiting. He's a grown man with his kids right now, Lawanya, but he said, I'm still waiting. Mm. Some of us as in it now don't know who we are because we never had a physical father, a physical man that knew who he was to affirm and tell you who you are. So we're trying to fulfill everybody else's expectation of us, and we ain't trying to look for God's expectation of us. Oh, I'm speaking deliverance, Pastor. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. And so your experiences, you had to go through some of it. You had to experience it. It's part of the purpose. Then you'll be able to say all things are working together. If you never went through nothing, how are you going to have that as a declaration? How can you stand on that promise and be able to say all things are working together for the good if you ain't never been through nothing? I know it's painful, but Pastor, he touched me. I know. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be insensitive, but God can work it out if he submitted to him. God, as I told the church last week, God spoke to Joseph, something to answer to Joseph in prison. I know you're in prison in your emotions, and God has been sending you answers, but you won't let nobody in. You got walls. God wants to use your experiences to advance your life as well as the kingdom. You had to go through some things because God uses your experiences to prepare you for your plan and your purpose in life. Ah, oh my God. Uh, 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 mm, come on, somebody. And so, and so these are some things that you and I got to understand. Your experiences matter. Don't you know as I teach the body of Christ here, my God, when you're in God's will, nothing is left unattended to. Everything matters when you're in God's will. Everything that's happening, the good, bad, is like putting everything in a, in a mixing pot. God is mixing it all together. Nothing is lost. Y'all listen to me. Write this down. Nothing is lost when you're in God's will. Nothing. Time is not lost. Situations is not lost because God is the redeemer of time. That's why the safest place is in his will. I'd rather be in his will than be in your will. Mm. And then write this down. Your passions. Your passions has a lot to do, my God, with your identity. I'm going to leave it alone after this. Your passions has a lot to do. What are you passionate about? I love the great doctor. He said, while you sleeping, I'm working. While you playing around, Dr. Miles said, I'm taking care of business. Come on, what, what are you passionate about? What, 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 what wakes you up? When God wakes you up, what, what are you passionate about? As I taught my men, we going to the same, I don't want to go through, going to the same old job, getting in the same old shower, driving, this is Tony Evans, driving the same old car, going to sit at the same old desk, to talk to the same old supervisor, to do the same old work, and then at 5 o'clock we get in that same old, we say bye to the same old people, get in that same old car, my God, drive the same old route, and get into it. go to the same old house, sit in the same old chair, look at the same old TV. 
and then we get up the next morning and do the same thing all over again. That's life for a lot of people that has authority and power to have dominion over the earth. You know why we operate like that? Because we don't know who we are. We jumping and shouting and speaking in tongues, but we still don't know who we are. Find out who you are. Mm. Your passion. Amen, mother. Your passion. What are you passionate about? As I said this, I only got one more and I'm done. You take my passion, you kill me. My passion, the very thing that I've been criticized about, is the very thing that's kept me from going back. See, you let people dictate what you will do in life. Don't let nobody make you feel less than because of who you are and what you bring to the table. My passion, Amber, matters. My passion has sustained me right now because of my love for God. And my passion has forged me through a lot of trials and a lot of tribulations. My passion, I'm using me because, see, I can talk about me. I can't talk about you, so don't let anybody criticize you about your gifts, your talents. Because they don't know, my God, that very thing they talking about is the very thing that's keeping you. You see what I'm trying to say? You say so, so, so some people may say it's strange because people don't want to live nothing. So, my God, when you strive to live holy, my God, it, it don't take all that. Right, 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 right. Uh, you mean tell me I got to read my Bible every day? You mean tell me I got to forgive? You mean tell me I got to quit going to the club and then being on church on Saturday and the club on Sunday? I mean in the church on Sunday? Yeah, you got to stop all that because it's a stumbling block. You mean tell me, my God, I can talk about God on Facebook and then when I get mad I can cuss everybody out on Facebook and I'm still okay? Then the devil is alive. So, so what did I just do? I just showed you some passion that many of you will criticize me about, but it keeps me striving to live right. I didn't create the Bible. God did. He said, if you love me, obey me. He said, if you love me, if your affections is towards me, if your focus is towards me, if your love is towards me, then you will strive to obey me. That means you will strive to look like me. You will strive to love like me. You will strive to forgive like me. You will give people back. You will show mercy to those, my God, that need mercy. You will be long-suffering towards people that need to be, that you need to be extend long-suffering to. My God, you won't be hard-hearted sitting up in the church, my God. Oh, my God, you will be able to help somebody that need help. You will be able to open up a door for somebody. You will be able to be a blessing to somebody when you start loving the things that God loves. That's right. That's right. Passion. Yeah. Now, passion that's uncontrolled will hurt. Passion that's out of control. And I've been out of control before, Cousin Sean. Coming up out there penitentiary, coming up out there, I was going hard. I had to learn my greatest lessons. You don't hear pastors say this, for my greatest mistakes. See, you got to take chances. And you learn from your mistakes. You ain't going to find too many people say some of the greatest lessons I had to learn come from my greatest mistakes. It takes an authentic person. Oh, my God. What are you passionate about? Tanya, you passionate about worship. That's why you're always up front worshiping. You know how many times I had to, I don't even say defend, because people don't understand your worship, but I understand your story. I know what you've been going through in life. And when you've been through some things, you just don't mind worshiping when you see God has brought you through things. So your passion. Do, do anybody know by the showing of hands? Let me move. Let me move. What are you passionate about this afternoon? When you get out of bed, what moves you? What cause do you have to live for? Other than Jordans. Other than a vacation. What are the cause? Are you passionate about advancing God's kingdom like I am? Not saying that you're not. I'm just asking you a question. What are you passionate about? Because those, those qualities and those experiences and those, those different passions and things that God has put in you has everything to do with your identity and your destiny. See what I'm trying to say? So quit dumbing down yourself to try to fit in with people who don't want nothing out of life. Ooh, I'm speaking to purpose and I'm just not jumping and shouting. And then your abilities, what are you gifted with? What are you gifted with? I want you to think, and I'm going to release you. Your experiences matter. The passions, things that you're passionate about matters. And the next thing, your abilities. 
Do you know what you are gifted with? What's some of your abilities? I want you to think, and I'm moving. What's some of your abilities? What are you gifted at? What do you feel that God has called you to do? Oh, I like when it get quiet. Because let me tell you when I like that. Because I know you're thinking. Yeah, that's right. That's right. See, some people got to have a whole lot of noise. Emotionalism will cost you your soul. A lot of people need noise because see, if I got a lot of noise, I don't have to deal with nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some people don't know how to get quiet. Because when you get quiet, now you got to deal with that inner self. You got to go up into the attic of your mind and deal with all this stuff you put up in the attic that you don't want nobody to know nothing about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, when you get quiet, you got to deal with that root system. The strength of a tree has to do with the root system. The root system is underground. You don't see it. <laughs> your spiritual gifts, you're gifted. The late doctor said, when somebody needs you, and I'm closing with this, he said, when people think of leadership, the first person that come to mind was the great Dr. Miles Monroe. When you think about kingdom leadership, some say John MacArthur, but I'm talking about kingdom. I'm talking about secular. Secular, you could think of John Maxwell and many more, but when I think about kingdom leadership, the first person that come to mind. See, see, that's why I read books. See, I'm a reader. When I, I went all the way through high school and never read a book from start to finish, Cousin Sean. I, didn't, I, went, I had to go to prison. See, that's my experience. Right, right, right. To become a raving fan. And I don't go nowhere without a book. When I'm in the barbershop, I got a book. I don't go nowhere. Even in the weight room, when I'm in between, I got a book. Because, see, one of the things that we don't do, we don't read. Keep them uneducated. Keep them dumb. Let their identity be in, in, in Jordans and, and getting 24-inch rims. That ain't going to matter. See, see, see. You want your gifts to be in the demand. When someone think of you, what is the first thing they should think about? If you're serving the world, the world, your passions, your gifts, your experiences. When somebody think of some, when, when, when somebody need some strength, I want to be able to have someone to talk to their daughter because they was dropped. See experiences. Spiritual gifts, passions, things you've been through matter. Right. Somebody dealing with a child with autism. Yeah. In our church that come, first thing we're going to think about is Tanya because you're dealing with one. Yeah. Yeah. When someone... Yeah. Keisha, when a young lady is... You got them. When people want to learn what disability is about and how to take care of people with developmental disabilities, you got them. When people want to learn how to be compassionate for those that's less fortunate, like you are, you got them. When someone come up off of crack cocaine and end up in the pool pit as a preacher, you got them. When someone is strung out on alcohol and cocaine and you deliver now, you got them. When someone, my God, is put down because they don't fit in, their style of worship and all that, my God, is not welcome in the church, you got them. All your experiences matter. Gideon was working in the wine press. God sent an angelic angel strategic timing to call forth his purpose and his identity. What have you called me to do is the question you should be asking God the rest of your days. What have you called me to do? And also, what did you create me to do? When you find out what you're called to do and what you're created to do, you start living and you move from existing to living. 
I want to ask some of you that's in the third generation of great grandkids. Have you lived? Or did you exist? For those that have grandkids like myself, are you living? Are you existing? Is life still feeling empty? Unfulfilled? Have you been rolled off? Have God been trying to send strategic people into your life and bring strategic people into your life to call forth your identity and your destiny, but you're so broken and so wounded, you can't receive the answer to your prayers? Have God sent somebody and placed somebody into your life to speak to your identity and tell you that I believe in you like he did with me with Eddie Miller? Have you, are you and I rejecting the answer? Are you living in fear that's paralyzing you and keeping you unproductive and ineffective for the king and his kingdom? Selah. Have God been trying to move my God to execute strategic people, strategic timing, strategic moments in your life, but because we are so bitter and so angry so we can't even recognize that God is trying to move us into our purpose and our plan. Don't you know that I can tell you this, that usually the people that God used to unlock your prisons, I'm not talking about physical prison, your prisons is people that you would have never thought that God would use. That's why you got to quit looking at people and what they drive, where they work at, where they live at, and think that that's just the one that's going to help you get free. God don't operate like that. God usually used people that's been rolled off, despised, and rejected, but has discovered their identity and operate in their purpose, and them is the people that God uses to send strategic words, strategic timing, strategic moments. I got many people that's come to going home for Christ Church, Cousin Sean. One of them is a pastor now. She said, I don't know why I'm at this church. Me and you don't come, we come from two completely different worlds. But her freedom, her emotional healing, her mental healing was tied up in this form of gangster. And now she's free, operating in purpose, one of my strongest leaders in the whole church. But if, 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 if she would have disqualified me because of my past, she would still be in church, wounded. Still be running around, wounded. Still be living, defeated. And now she's free. I'm talking about Pastor Madeline Andrews. Let's give God a hand for her. And my last one, I think about you, Lawanya. You go to Juju's church, he too hard. He preached too hard. I'm being serious, Pastor. He preached too hard. They too real. I don't, we got to stop living in any kind of way and be over there. You know, I, I don't make you do nothing. I encourage you to live right. I can't make you do nothing. Yeah, the wine said, yeah. And just the way he preached is what I need. Amen. And so today, Lawanya, stand up, please, Lawanya. Just, just, just wave your hand, Lawanya. Just, just wave your hand, Lawanya. Just wave your hand. Thank you, Lord. And we have had to walk through so much because our kids has dealt with the same thing. But if she to let my former life interfere, see, because God had the key through me to help her get through with her babies. So that's what I'm trying to say. Quit disqualifying yourself because of other people's. Quit looking at people to. Wow. Yeah. Quit talking about. I, yeah. Quit talking about. God said that's the exact person. He got the passion. The experience. She or he got the passion. She or he got the experiences that you need to unlock your prison. Are you staying in prison longer than what you're supposed to? Are you living in fear longer than what you're supposed to? How many of you have walked away from God in your affections? How many of you have not no longer in, in love with God like you used to be when you first fell in love with God? How many of you have things on top of you that you know that should be up under you? Are you dominated by the tree? Is money your God? Is alcohol your problem? Prescription pills. Marijuana is legal, 
but is your motive right, All right. for smoking it? All right. Everything is permissible, but everything ain't beneficial. So if you know you've been struggling with some form of addiction, why would you go now and torment yourself again? That's right. That's right. See, I'm not against that, but God looks at your motive. Yes, sir. It helps. Yes, it helps. But if you're trying to get it because for the wrong reasons, now God is judging your motive for why you're doing what you're doing. And it's not just that, it's everything. I know I went over, but thank you. Because some of y'all, I might not never see again. And I don't want nobody's blood on my hand. I don't want nobody be, to be able to say, and you won't be able to say that when you stand before God, nobody took time to tell me who I was. Nobody took time to truly, my God, tell me what this Jesus thing is all about. It's about you. Christ died for you. He died for me. So that he can redeem us back to our original condition so we can get healthy and go out, shine, and affect the world. To dominate the world, conduct instead of the world dominating us. It's simple. Whatever your head bow. If you're here this afternoon and you want to experience real life, you're tired of wandering around in the wilderness in your mind. You're tired of everybody else's opinions and, and you're tired of living up to everybody else's identity and you're ready to, for God to reveal your true identity and why he created you. I want you to stop and think about that. I know it's a lot of people here, but as I told y'all, you got to get delivered from the perception and the opinions of other people. Don't let the people that you came with or that you think may be looking at you keep you from taping, taking a leap of faith. Don't let fear of walking down and everybody going to look at me and everybody going to think this about me. I ain't ready to be perfect. And I ain't nobody said you had to be perfect because you can't change. You only God can. But if you are ready to discover a new step, a new level, and you are ready to go to a new mountain. But first, you need, meet, you need to meet the God of the mountain. If that's you, please, the strategic time and strategic moment has come. God birthed this church six years ago and launched this church today. But he used that right there to get you to come so you don't miss out on this opportunity right here. So if that's you and you want to give your life to Christ and you're bold enough, to come forth because you want to know who you are and you don't want to die outside of God's will. Even though it's the sixth year anniversary and we launch our new campus, it's all about what we're doing right now. So if that's you, just raise your hand. If you want to give your life to Christ, anybody, anybody, if you are here this afternoon and you're hurting, struggling, I just need some strength in any capacity. I can assure you that I know this by the Spirit, that everybody in this church don't know what their identity is and don't know what their purpose and their plan is. Because if we all did, we'd be living life much different. We'd be making much different decisions. And I promise you, if you're listening to me, you would be much more happier and fulfilled if you was operating your purpose. Sometimes you got to come forth so God can speak to that which is lying dormant down on the inside of you. And so if you are ready to come forth to discover that then, then come. Let us pray. Let us pray. Identity, purpose, strength, healing, mental, whatever it is. Just come line up right here. God have need of thee. God have need of thee. God have need of thee. Don't leave out the same way you came in. Don't leave out wounded and hurt. Don't leave out defeated. Don't leave out wondering in your mind. Uh, if you're on the brink of giving up, you might as well come down here. 
If you're ready to walk out on her or him, you might want to get up and come down here. I promise you, come on, somebody. Oh my God, help my soul, help my soul, help my soul. Strategic moment, strategic time. This is what it's all about right here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God have need of thee. God have need of thee. Help me know you. If you're ready to submit and surrender, come on down. Some of you have allowed the python to bite you, and you have disconnected from the very place that God has planted you, and now you're struggling to get yourself back to where you're supposed to be. You should be here too. It's the reason why you came. You didn't come just for the lunch. You didn't come just to celebrate, my God, with the church. You came back to get reconnected to the body of going off at Christ Church. You ought to be here too. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the souls. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. They steady coming. I know it's in the spirit. I give God the glory. This is what it's about. Don't give up. Don't quit. You're a masterpiece. You're a masterpiece. You're created in God's image. <laughs> Greater is he that lives in you, woman of God, than he that's in the world. <laughs> oh, my God. People might have wrote you off, but God wrote you in, woman of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know it's been tough, but God got you. You're not alone. That's right. That's right. That's right. You're not alone. You're not alone. Oh, 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 Antoinette, come get behind her, Antoinette, come get behind her. Oh, my God, God is working. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, my God. Strategic moment, strategic timing. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Are you ready to let go? What do you need to let go? What unhealthy attachments do you got that you need to give up? Ah, you should be at the altar because God is going to break you so he can make you. Unhealthy attachments. Unhealthy relationships. Thank you, Lord. Some of you need to make a decision about where you want to be planted at for this next season in your life. Some of you are contemplating, should I join? Should I come back? All you got to do is come forth and let God speak to you. He's going to talk to you, I promise you. When I release the man of God to pray, you're going to get your answer. But you got to be willing to come. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This is what it's all about right here. Cousin Sean, souls. Restoration to God's kingdom. Healing to God's kingdom. People of God. Yes, Lord. Bless them. Bless them. Oh, my God. I don't mind laboring a little bit. I don't mind laboring a little bit because sometimes it takes that. God have need of thee. God have need of thee. Are you ready to let it go? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Do you need any level of strength? Any level of healing? Any level of peace? Uh, how about struggling with unforgiveness? How about being bitter? How about having an against your family members? Is that you? Come. Let's take care of all of it. Don't walk out of here the way you walked in. Jesus. Talking to God. I know you came down here wanting the pastor to pray, and I'm gonna pray and release you, but you gotta talk to God because I'm not God. I can't do for you what only God can do for you. So you gotta open up your mouth and you have to talk to God. You have to tell God what your issue is because He already know anyway. So I want y'all to set the altar to open up your mouth and begin to talk to God. Oh my God, then God's gonna release me to pray for you. Oh my God. Yes, Lord. Amen. If you got to bow down, then bow down. Thank you, Lord. Come on, talk to him. Come on. Come on, talk to him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All you got to do is submit and surrender. Yes, Lord. Some of our problems, God, we don't want to submit. Some of our problems, God, we don't want to surrender. If you surrender and submit, he can fix it. If you won't let it go, he can't fix it. If you won't give it to him, he can't fix it. If you won't say, God, here it is. Take it away from me, God. I can't do it no more. I'm tired. Release. Release. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Release. Come on up, Pastor Dean. Get up, Ashik, get up, Oshandah. We're getting ready to pray. Thank you, Lord. Grab the mic, son. Thank you, Lord. Everybody that's at the altar, as the Spirit of God has so wonderfully just said, God cannot fix you what you won't release. God cannot heal what you won't give him. You have come this far, you might as well let it go. You have made your way all the way down in front of all these people, let it go. Don't come down and hold on to nothing, let it go. Oh my God, God is ready and willing if you let it go. I'm speaking to somebody about the Spirit. My God, let it go. You didn't come this far, release it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man of God, pray over the body. Pray over the body. It's many that did not come that should have been down there. That I know about the Spirit as well. Many bitterness and unforgiveness. A lot of pain in the body of Christ, Pastor Dean, sitting there right now. They didn't come, but there is no distance in prayer. So I want you to pray a commanded blessing, son. Psalms 33 over the body of Christ. So that yokes can be destroyed. Chains can be broken. Healing can take place. Restoration can manifest in the lives of the people. Some of you, you can still come. There's time to come. And what God is doing here in every heart, you can see tears and release. And the Lord says, some of you, there's just an area that you need to forgive. And one of those areas is you need to forgive yourself. And so some of you, even as you come, you're going to stand up and come up here. There's several of you. You've got to forgive yourself for what happened in the past. For God is doing a new thing. He said in Isaiah, do you not perceive what he's doing in your heart right now? That he would allow you to begin to come to a point where you're saying, yes, yes, whatever you say. I had to get to that point where I said, yes, whatever you say, God, I recognize what the man of God has said. I'm not walking in my purpose. I'm just living life. I'm just paying bills. I'm just going through the motions. And you know, and I know that you were made for more than that. Several of you come, 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 stand up and come. Man of God, come. Woman of God, come. Thank you, Lord. God says that he stirs and fans into flame. He told young Timothy, he was a, a young minister, he fans into flame the gift of God that is in you. And even now, Father, we thank you that you're fanning into flame that which is dead and that which has been dormant and that which has been buried beneath guilt and condemnation. You are now bringing up to the surface yeah, 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 you did that, yeah, you were involved with that, yeah, you sinned, yeah, you were addicted to that, yes, you were in that relationship, but God says, I'm bringing you out for such a time as this, to be a light and to be salt to the world, for he says he's coming back soon, he's coming back soon, he's coming back soon, will you come to him? And those of you that have come, you want to begin to walk in your purpose, and even those that are still sitting in your seat, I want you to pray these words after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I recognize that you shed your blood, you laid down your life, you suffocated on a cross, you suffered and you died. Not only that I could go to heaven, but that blood also purchased freedom for me to walk in the fullness of the gospel and your word says in Romans 1 I'm not ashamed come on say it I'm not ashamed I'm not ashamed I'm not ashamed of the gospel the good news the testimony that I have that you brought me out and I receive today grace I receive today forgiveness and I receive power to begin to walk in what you called me to be and to do on this earth 
more than just collecting a paycheck more than just going to work and clocking in and clocking out more than just doing dishes and doing laundry and going home and going out going through the motions over and over you called me to a purpose now just lift your hands all across the room so I receive your grace now come on lift your hands I receive yeah this real he's giving you boldness Paul said in Ephesians 6 pray that I have boldness to preach I'm praying God that this group has boldness to begin to step out and quit listening to the opinions of other people and to be what you've called us to be in the name of Jesus now in your own words just begin to talk to God begin to worship him oh God you're all I want oh God you're all I need oh God I'm gonna walk in it oh my God I'm gonna walk in it Jesus Jesus call on his name Jesus Jesus deliver me come on that's it I hear it there's a sound there's a sound of worship you make that sound the fruit of your lips worshiping come on hallelujah 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 Jesus I'm gonna walk in your ways let your will be done let your kingdom come it's all about you it's all about you it's all about you thank you Lord oh, 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 yeah. Minister Ramona is she still here I think she stepped out several in you several of you in the room you've been grieving you lost something you lost someone you might have been fired you might have lost a house they might have repossessed your car but you're grieving the scripture says that he comes to comfort those who grieve in Zion part of why you're stuck and part of why you can't move forward is because you got to begin to move past the grief I'm not gonna preach a sermon we're just gonna end here the Lord is releasing just as the man of God said he's calling people up he's looking for climbers he's looking for climbers you know in order to go up you got to put some effort you got to flex some muscles you got to push past I'm not saying what you lost was not significant I'm not saying what you lost was not terrible but God's got some stuff to replace what you lost man of God God has some better stuff to replace woman of God what you lost and I want you all to lift your hands one more time some of you I heard the Lord say it was a business idea that you lost and you had to file bankruptcy you lost your credit Woo! but God is a restorer come on lift your hands it's a sign of surrender it's a sign of submission Lord you're all I want and God let your will be done tell him I'm telling you some of you are facing some terrible things right now I know but he's all that you want and where you think there's a dead end God is opening a door oh come on say Lord I'm gonna walk through the door come on tell him tell him tell him I'm gonna walk through the door some of you it's just a walking through the door of healing 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 in your soul healing in your mind hallelujah 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 if you need to go you can go you're released to go but there God is doing a work in the room there is a healing there is a healing he is the one that heals the broken heart he said it in Isaiah chapter 61 he heals broken hearts let him heal your heart today Jesus Jesus come on sing that again worship team you're all I want 
You're all I never needed, Jesus. Jesus, you're all I want. It's all right. You're all I ever needed. You're all I want. Oh, help me know you are here. Jesus, you're all I want. You're all I have. You're all I ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you. Help me know you are here. Everyone just stand together. We're going to close in prayer. Help me know you are here. We thank you. Thanks, Millers, for being here. Eddie and Kendall, they're my, I work for them as well. And God has been such a blessing to that family. Thank you for everyone that came today. We want to declare a blessing over you as you leave. As we close in prayer. Just bow your heads. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you that you're not about hype, but you're real and you have done a work in our hearts today. And God, we thank you today for every family represented, every household, every individual. We thank you that your will has been done and your kingdom is coming. Lord, we thank you that you send us, not from your presence, but as we go to our homes, as we go to eat lunch, God, I thank you for the work that you're doing in our lives. I thank you for the work that you're doing in our hearts, that you're drawing us closer to yourself. And God, I thank you for what you're doing in this church. God, I thank you for those that you're calling to be a part of what you're doing here at Going Hard for Christ, that you're drawing them. I, I pray you'd speak. I pray you'd speak in the name of Jesus and confirm your will in our lives in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we could ever ask or think. Be glory, honor, and power both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. You are released to go.